winning winning blueprint presents. Five NFL franchises decided to turn their teams over to rookie quarterbacks in 2012, an unprecedented number thus far. So as they embark on their rookie campaigns, we will follow. So, now let's meet the NFL's starting five. At number five. A 5'11 rookie out of Wisconsin and the starter of the Seattle Seahawks, introducing number three, Russell Wilson. At number four, a 6'3 rookie from Oklahoma State and the starter of the Cleveland Browns. Give it up for... Number three, Brandon Williams. At number three, a 6'4 rookie via Texas A&M and starter for the Miami Dolphins, number, number seven seed, Brandon Number two, a 6'2 rookie and second overall draft pick in the 2012 NFL Draft by way of Baylor and the starter of the Washington Redskins, welcome number, number 10, 10, Robert Griffin the third. And... At number one, a 6'4 rookie and first overall selection in the 2012 NFL Draft by way of Stanford and the star of the Indianapolis Colts, number 12, Welcome, this is the NFL's starting five. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. And this is a terrific program today because for the third consecutive week, the starting five went four and one. And these guys are heating it up down the stretch. And poor Ryan Tannehill because for the second consecutive week, he was the one member of the starting five to not get it done. So he's been on the losing end of this group of late. And so they're getting it done. I love this group of quarterbacks. These rookie quarterbacks are redefining the way we look at rookie quarterbacks in the National Football League. I mean, they're getting it done. And some of these guys, and some of these teams don't have any talent. You could argue, yeah, they do have talent. I look at some of the guys that they're getting the football to. Like Brandon Whedon has talent. Robert Griffin III has talent. Andrew Luck doesn't have talent in, in Indianapolis. These guys can play. Look, if you make it to the National Football League, you can play football. But I'm talking about elite talent. Guys that make a difference. Guys that matter. Guys that win you football games. I mean, he's elevated the play of those guys out there. I mean, Reggie Wayne, that's talent. You know, Kobe Fleener, still, he, he's a rookie, have reservations about him, but that's talent. Allen, the tight end, rookie, out of Clemson, talent. But you look at the rest of these receivers, T.Y. Hilton, Donnie Avery, Brazil. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about those guys. I mean, you stick T.Y. Hilton, Brazil, or even Donnie Avery, you stick them on the Tennessee Titans. You stick them on the Oakland Raiders. You stick them on the Arizona Cardinals. You stick them on a different ball club. Not named the New England Patriots. Not named the Indianapolis Colts. Not named the Denver Broncos. You stick them on a mediocre team. Who are they? We've seen Donnie Avery on some mediocre ball clubs. We saw him in Tennessee. We saw him in St. Louis. What was he? An average receiver at best. You stick him on the Indianapolis Colts, he's making a difference. And so these guys are not only 
redefining the position, but they're helping out guys who have been in the league for some time or rookies that maybe wouldn't be what they are if they were on another team and they're making them viable options in the National Football League. Same thing with Ryan Tannehill. There's not an ounce of talent on that team. He's throwing the ball to Brian Hartline and Devon Bass. That's it. You know, you can sprinkle in some Fasano if you like, but Reggie Bush, those two receivers I just named, Devon Bass, Brian Hartline, that's it. You know, Anthony Fasano makes some plays here and there, but there's not a lot of talent on that team. Miami doesn't have a lot of talent. They're void of talent. And so, Tannehill's been able to scratch and claw and get his hands on five wins. I don't know how, but they've been able to do it. And that's probably a testament to him, that coaching staff with Joe Philbin and his whole group been able to get the most out of what they have. They're squeezing a dry rag out there. They're squeezing it, and they're still finding a way to get drops out of it to fall into the bucket. Don't know how. They've got a bucket that's half filled with water. And I don't know how they've done it because they've been squeezing a dry rag this whole time. But that's what good quarterbacks will do for you. That's what this group of quarterbacks are. Good quarterbacks in the National Football League. So let's talk about what they were able to do in Week 14 of the National Football League 2012 season. Because once again, they were a special group. They went 4-1. Again, only member to not get it done was Ryan Tannehill. And I give him a pass this week. I actually thought that he performed adequately this week. Had they been playing a lesser opponent, I think he played good enough to win. But they were playing the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco, which amounts to a loss for a Dolphins team that doesn't have a lot of talent. So let's look at what they were able to do in week number 14. Start with the number five member of the starting five. That is going to be Russell Wilson. He had himself a good old time out there in Seattle against the Arizona Cardinals in Week 14. Supposed to be family business, supposed to be a tight affair between two teams that know each other well. It was anything but. This was a massacre. This was the December Day Massacre in Seattle. 58 to nothing. And Russell Wilson didn't have to do a lot in this game. When you win 58 to nothing, you don't have to do a lot. You let other people get in the game, have some fun, and do some things. You've already done enough when your team wins 58 to nothing. So you just take a seat back. It's like a preseason game when you win 58 to nothing. By midway through the third quarter, you should have on a nice ball cap. Or in this case, we're in Seattle. It's December. So you go put on a nice skull cap with the Seahawks logo on it. You're around joking, laughing with a few of your teammates, having fun, laughing at a few players that's in the game that don't normally get to play and watching them either make mistakes or make plays and you're cheering for them and just having a good time on the sideline, much like a preseason game. That's what they treated this as because by the end of the third quarter, they had got all of their starters out of the game and they had started filtering in a lot of the backups. And rightfully so, this game was 38 to nothing at the half. Whew, this got ugly quick. Russell Wilson was 7 of 13 for 148 yards, one touchdown, one interception in this game. He didn't need to be special in this game. Everyone around him was special in this game. So I don't fault him for not having huge numbers. He didn't need them. <laughs> you went 58 to nothing, your numbers don't have to be huge. Just turn around, hand the ball off to Marshawn Lynch, and when they bite on the run, you pull it out of his belly, go up top, find someone open, hit him for a touchdown, go sit down, get some Gatorade, Enjoy the festivities of the game. That's what he did. They won this game in a route 58 to nothing over the lifeless Arizona Cardinals. And he did his part to help them stomp on this Arizona Cardinals team. So he had fun at the expense of the Arizona Cardinals. Did Russell Wilson getting his eighth win on the season. So you look at the number four member in the starting five. And that's Brandon Whedon. And for the third consecutive week in a row, he was able to lead his team to a victory. Don't look now, but the Cleveland Browns are now 5-8. and eight. And Brandon Whedon and his Cleveland Browns team, they're starting to get it. And Brandon Whedon is himself starting to get it. And I told you, I like what he's been doing over the last month of this season. You know, earlier on in the season, I was perturbed by Brandon Whedon because I didn't think he got it. Again, he's a rookie. 
every rookie doesn't get it at the same time. The light switch doesn't go on for every rookie at the same point. So at times I question whether he belonged in this group. But there's no questions anymore. He's answered all my questions. He's showing me what I saw at Oklahoma State. The guy with poise, standing tall in the pocket, making good decisions, making good reads, getting the football to his playmakers in a spot where they can catch it and make something happen thereafter. I like this Brandon Whedon guy. And he's performing at a high level right now, high enough for his team to be riding a three-game winning streak right now. He went 17 of 30 in this game for 217 yards, no touchdowns, but more importantly, no interceptions. That's the number that I look at when I talk about Brandon Whedon. Forget about the touchdowns. Let me see the interceptions. What are you doing to hurt your team? Are you doing anything to hurt your team? In this case, he didn't. He didn't make the mistake. He didn't turn it over. He didn't change this game. This was a 30-7 to route of the Kansas City Chiefs. First play of the game, Chiefs run, 80 yards, Jamal Charles, touchdown, 7-0. Chiefs are leading. You're thinking, if you're the Browns, wow, that's a terrible way to start the game. He didn't panic. He didn't try to force the issue and get seven points back on one play. He just took it down the field. He played within the game, played within the scheme. They won the game 30-7. to seven. They scored 30 unanswered points in this game. And again, that's knowing your competition. You know who you're playing. You're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. No need for you to panic. This is not a good football team. They've won two games all season long. You don't need to come out and be a world beater in this game. Try to make some plays that aren't there to, to be made and force the issue and turn it over. Just play within yourself. You'll win this game. They're the Kansas City Chiefs for a reason. They don't play good football, especially not on the road. And that's what Whedon did in this game. 17-30, 217, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He got it done. You know They scored 30 points, so he did his job. Didn't always cap it off with a touchdown pass, but he did his job, got him down there, and he allowed touchdowns to be scored. That's all I care about. Get the points on the scoreboard. That's what he did. They had a punt return in this game. Whedon drove them down about two or three separate occasions, putting field goals or touchdowns on the board. Trent Richardson had two touchdown runs. Whedon did his job in this game. And I'm loving the maturation of Brandon Whedon right now as his team, when they're third straight, to go to 5-8 and eight on the season, as they route the Kansas City Chiefs at home 30-7. to seven. Now they're 5-8 and eight on the season, and they're playing really good football. They're a confident bunch right now are the Cleveland Browns. And a big part of that reason is because of Brandon Whedon not turning the football over, being a better quarterback, getting the football in his skill guys' hands and allowing them to make plays. So you look at the number three member of the starting five. That's going to be Mr. Ryan Tannehill. Now, he was the only member of the starting five to lose in Week 14. But again, I give him a pass because they played the 49ers on the road. That's a tough matchup for a Dolphins team that doesn't have a lot of talent. To go on the road against a tough-minded defensive group like the 49ers and try to get a win, that's a tough task for anyone, let alone a Dolphins team that really doesn't have a lot of talent. And I keep saying that. It's like I'm beating a dead horse. But when you watch this Dolphins team, you want to know where the points are coming from because, you know, again, outside of Brian Hartline, Devon Best, and Reggie Bush, you look at this offense and you say, where are the playmakers? Where are the skill guys that you can just get the football in their hands and, and watch them work? Where are those guys? There are not many on this team. You know, Marlon Moore can run, but I haven't seen enough of Marlon Moore to, to say that, hey, he's a guy that can make a difference. So you can't go on the road and make mistakes and expect to win ball games. They made mistakes in this game. You lose games that way. But... Brian Tannehill wasn't the culprit this time. And that's something that I like to see. You don't be the reason that your team loses a football game. In this game, Tannehill was 17 of 30, 150 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. You look at those numbers, they're not eye popping numbers. You know, 17 of 30, 150 yards. So we're talking less than 10 yards per completion. But what he did was he moved the sticks, he played within the framework of this game. Again, you're playing against the San Francisco 49ers. They're not going to give you a lot. you got to get the ball out of your hands quickly. Alden Smith is lurking at all times. So is Justin Smith. You have to watch out. So you got to get the ball out of your hands. And he took what the defense was giving him. So it wasn't a lot of yardage there. It wasn't a lot of chunk plays. But I tell you what, there were some plays that were left on the field, as always, with Ryan Tannehill. And this is the thing. 
that really aggravates me when I talk about Ryan Tannehill. You, you got Brian Hartline running wide open. You got Devon Best running wide open. You don't get wide open in the National Football League often. You don't get open on this San Francisco 49ers defense often. They present themselves opportunities to make big plays in a passing game present themselves, you have to take advantage of them. And he didn't do that in this game once again. So from that standpoint, from that vantage point, very disappointed in Ryan Tannehill. But his overall body of work in this game really can't be mad at the performance that he had, the effort that he put forth. They just weren't good enough to go on the road and get a win against a quality opponent like the San Francisco 49ers. So now they're 5-8 and eight on the season. And again, for the second consecutive week, his Dolphins team was the only one in this group. He was the only member of the starting five to not get it done. And so maybe next week he'll be able to flip his fortunes around as he'll be taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can't beat the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. You have serious issues. And we'll be discussing that at great lengths next week if he can't get it done against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So now we get into the number two. member of the starting five, and that's Robert Griffin III. By far the most impressive showing of the week. We'll get into that a little bit later, but what a gutsy performance. He laid it out on the line for his team and helped them come away with a come-from-behind victory, their most impressive win by far of the season. They've had a couple of blowouts this season where you know, they scored a lot of points. They've had a couple of showings where they absolutely got it done on the offensive end. And then there are games like this that define your season. When you're trailing and you need your players to step up and make plays for you. He was one of those players willing to step up, put his body on the line, risk it all in the name of winning. And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to just leave it on the field. You may not win, but at least you can say, I, everything I had, I gave it my all, I left it on the field. I don't have anything else left to give. And that's what Robert Griffin III could say on Sunday as his team was able to reign triumphant over the Baltimore Ravens in overtime. This was a thrilling game, and it was thrilling because the Redskins were trailing by eight with a little under five minutes to go in the game. They get the football. They have been stagnant for the most part all second half. Trailing by eight, needing a touchdown and a two-point conversion, Robert Griffin III proceeded to take his team down the field. In doing so, he got injured. He hurt himself, hurt his leg, could barely stand up, could barely walk, limped off the sideline with the help of some guys off the sideline, the training staff and, and several other players helping him to his feet, helping him limp to the sideline. He told Mike Shanahan, give me one play and I'm going back in. And that's exactly what happened. They had one play. It, it happened to be pass and fence, first down for the Redskins. He goes back out there, three plays, throws two darts, Two first downs, get the Redskins in scoring position, and then he can't get down the field. He can barely walk. He can barely move as he completes a long 30-yard pass down the field. His whole team is waiting on him to get up there so they can snap the ball. He's limping his way down the field. He realizes, I can no longer at this point help my football team. So he takes himself out of the game, comes out, into Kirk Cousins, another rookie, Gets it done. Redskins score a touchdown. They get the two-point conversion. They take it to overtime. Force a stop. Field a punt. Return that punt into Ravens territory. Run a few plays. Kick the game winning field goal. They get it done. Robert Griffin III was a big part of this come from behind victory by the Redskins in week 14. What a dramatic finish. What a dramatic game. What a big, huge win and a huge lift Robert Griffin III was. Being heroic. Staying on the field. Coming back after injury giving it his all until he had nothing left to give, coming off the field, making a smart decision to come off, knowing that he couldn't give his teammates what they needed, getting off the field, helping them get the right man in for the job, and securing the victory. Redskins get it done in overtime, 31-28. to 28. They've now won four games in a row. Robert Griffin III had another game with a passer rating up over 100. He now leads the National Football League in passer rating. This guy is getting it done. He is phenomenal. And once again, Robert Griffin III is defying all odds. He is once again helping the Washington Redskins rise from the ashes as they were left for dead just a month ago. And so Robert Griffin III goes 
15 of 26 in this game. 246 yards passing, one touchdown, no interceptions. He got it done again, helped his team down the stretch, in the clutch. He did what he could, got his team in scoring position, turned them over to Kirk Cousins, who did the rest. Robert Griffin III, in conjunction with Kirk Cousins, got the Redskins a win. Big win for this Redskins team. And a big reason why they were able to grab that win was Robert Griffin III. So you look at the number one. Member of the starting five, and it's Andrew Luck. What, what, what more can we say about this guy? Other than he keeps winning. Is it, it, it isn't always pretty. In fact, most times it's not pretty. But he gets the job done. He's so gritty. It's not pretty, but it's gritty. It's Andrew Luck and his Indianapolis Colts team. I told you, there's not a lot of talent here. Don't fool yourself. That's why, even though I don't like the fact that Andrew Luck turns it over every game, way too much for me, way too much for my liking, you got to give the man credit where it is due because he is doing a lot with a little. They've given this man table scraps and asked him to make a four-course meal. And every week, he finds a way to take those table scraps and make a four-star dinner. Every week, he finds a way to take this ragtag bunch of Indianapolis Colts, receivers, tight ends, running backs, offensive line, and they get it done. You could argue that Reggie Wayne is the one piece that he has that he can rely on every single week. But the rest of these guys, rookies, you know, at the tight end position, rookies at the running back position, rookies at, out at receiver, some of them would not last five seconds in the NFL if they were on another franchise because they wouldn't even get noticed. They wouldn't even be an integral part of that team's offense. Maybe special teams, but not on their offense. Yet, you stick them on this team with the Indianapolis Colts, you stick them in that huddle with Andrew Luck, and all of a sudden, they're viable options in the National Football League. And that's what you got to love about Andrew Luck, what he's able to do with the pieces that he's been given. Hasn't been given the most talent, but he's still found a way to get nine wins this season. And again, on Sunday, he did it again. Turned the football over to Andrew Luck, put himself and his team in a 20-7 to deficit before finding a way to scratch and claw and give his team a chance to win. Wasn't all Andrew Luck. The defense stepped up, forced some turnovers. Special teams pinned the Tennessee Titans deep, forcing a turnover. Ended up giving the Colts the lead briefly. Ultimately, that touchdown propelled them to get the lead later on in the game and win the football game. But it wasn't all Andrew Luck. But again, when they need Andrew Luck to step up, make a play, he responds. And that's the mark of a leader. That's the mark of a good quarterback. When your team needs you the most, what do you do? Do you crumble under the weight and the pressure of your team needing you to perform? Or do you get it done in the clutch? And that's been Andrew Luck all season long. Now, in this game, he wasn't impressive. I was not impressed with Andrew Luck in this game at all. But what I was impressed with was the fact that the Indianapolis Colts were able to get the win. I don't care how it looks. I'm not here for style points. You know, I'm not here for a perfect 10. Doesn't have to be a 10 all the time. I'll take a 2.7 on a scale of 1 to 10 as long as you come back with the win. I don't care what it looks like. Just get the W and Andrew Luck seems to be very adept at getting Ws. It's not always going to be pretty. Not always going to pass the eye test. Not always going to be aesthetically pleasing. But at the end of the day, you look up at the scoreboard Indianapolis Colts have more than the opposition. More times than not, and that's why the Indianapolis Colts will probably be going to the postseason this year because Andrew Luck finds a way to win football games. And he did it again against the Tennessee Titans, 27-23. to They were able to get it done, win this game. Andrew Luck, again, wasn't impressive in this game. He was 16 of 34. Again, less than 50% completion percentage. You know how I feel about that. 196 yards passing. One touchdown, two interceptions. Again, turning the football over. That's something that he's been doing of late. Consistently turning the football over. That seems to be a bugaboo now moving forward. And again, 
You can get away with that when you're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can get away with that when you're playing the Tennessee Titans. You can get away with that when you're playing the Detroit Lions. What happens when those opponents turn into the Baltimore Ravens, the Denver Broncos? What happens when you no longer have that margin of error that you have when you're playing a bad team? What happens when the team in front of you has no problem taking your turnovers, turning them into seven, not three, not punting the football back to you, not turning it back over themselves? What happens when that team in front of you can score 42 points, can score 49 points like the New England Patriots did on this very Indianapolis Colts team, not even you know two months ago? So they have to clean that up. But again, I don't care how it looks, just win. We can fix whatever the problem is. It's always better to fix it while winning. And that's what this Colts team, because of Andrew Luck, has been able to do. So let's get into the weekly rankings of the NFL's starting five and talk about what they were able to do in week 14, where they rank amongst each other, and who had the best week, who had the worst week, and see where they fall in between. So we'll start with number five in week 14. And so coming in at number five in week 14, was Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, I thought, had a horrendous game against the Tennessee Titans. There were fumbled snaps, interceptions being thrown. One of them, you could argue the referees probably made a bad call on. Maybe should have overturned the call, but you can't make that decision. You can't make that throw in the first place. I don't put that one on the officials. I put that on Andrew Luck. You got to be smarter. Sometimes less is better. And in that instance, just taking the sack would have been fine. I'm pretty sure your head coach or your interim coach right now, Bruce Arians, would have loved for you to have just taken a sack on that play instead of throwing it into the belly of Will Witherspoon and allowing him to run it in for a pick six. So I just thought that he didn't show up and play some of his better football in this game. But again, they were playing the Tennessee Titans, a four-win team. And he didn't need to be at his best for them to get this win. He just needed to do enough, and he did. You look at his numbers, 16 of 34, 196 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. These turnovers are the reason why he comes in at number five because, again, completion percentage under 50%, 16 to 34. So we're, we're well under 50%. We're probably right around 47 46%. Completion percentage, you know how I feel about that. The ball is hitting the ground too often for Andrew Luck. And then you turn around and you compound matters by throwing two interceptions. So not only are we less than 50% completion percentage, we also got two picks in the mix. Just too many mistakes. He also fumbled in this game. Wasn't recovered by the Titans, but again, you can't fumble the football. You can't turn the football over. You can't have so many incompletions. That's what Andrew Luck has been about of late. But again... He's still finding ways to win. And so you do whatever you like as long as the team is winning football games. But he's going to have to clean that up if he wants to help his team get to the postseason and actually do damage when they get to the postseason. So coming in at number four in the weekly ranks for the NFL starting five is Ryan Tannehill. Now, I told you I felt really good about his performance against the San Francisco 49ers. It wasn't a world-beating performance. You know, He wasn't going out there and, and carving and shredding up San Francisco 49ers. He was just taking what they were giving him. 17 of 30, 150 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Nothing overwhelming there. In fact, we're less than 10 yards per completion. That's not good in the National Football League. You want to be getting over 10 yards per completion in the National Football League, but again, that's a good defense he was playing against. San Francisco 49ers, they're going to challenge you. They're going to make you take what they give you. Alden Smith, Justin Smith, very dominant in what they do up front, trying to get pressure on the opposing quarterback. And so Ryan Tannehill took what was there. Now the reason he's fourth on this list, because there weren't many quarterbacks in the starting five that had tremendous games like a week ago where everyone played really good football. It was hard to move guys up the list because of who was a, ahead of them. It, it, guys were just playing lights out football a week ago. You know, comebacks and things of that nature. That wasn't the case this week. He just missed throws down the field. And again, that's his bugaboo. You know, with Andrew Luck, 
his bugaboo is turnovers. He's turning it over way too much at an alarming rate. Right now, he leads the NFL in interceptions. He's turning the ball over too much as Andrew Luck. You look at Ryan Tannehill, and his bugaboo is he's not hitting the deep ball. He's missing it too often. How many times have we seen Brian Hartline running down the field? Have to dive for a pass that's two yards too far. Have to slow down for a pass that's two yards too short. How many times have we seen Devon Best open and have to jump and extend for a ball that's two yards too high? Can't get to it. He's missing open receivers down the field. He has to stop that. If you want to be good in this league, you want to have your team win more football games, be in a position to win more football games, score more points, give your team a shot. You got to hit those big plays when they open up. You're not going to get those opportunities often in the National Football League. I say it all the time, but it's the truth. You don't get wide open in the National Football League. And your receivers, somehow, one way or another, they're getting open and you're missing them. Got to hit them. That's why you come in at number four in week 14 in the NFL's weekly list of the NFL starting five. You look at the number three starting five member in the weekly list in week 14, and it's Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson really didn't have to do much this game. I mean, you win 58 nothing, and there's really not a lot that your team needs from you in this game. And so he's being penalized because there wasn't a lot for him to do. You know how they say too many cooks in the kitchen spoils the pot? That was Russell Wilson on this day. They didn't really need his help. They were moving. The Arizona Cardinals. They were packing them up and moving them and shipping them back to Arizona with a loss. And there were already eight people helping move. They didn't have a lot of stuff. They didn't need a lot of help. They already had more help than they really needed. So he was just standing by, watching guys take boxes, put them on the truck. Hey, guys, you need my help now? Nah, we're good. Don't worry about it. We'll call you if we need you. And so he really didn't have to do much. 7-13, 148 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He didn't have to do much. They didn't need him to be ultra efficient. They didn't need him to throw for two or three touchdown passes. They didn't need him to scramble a lot. They didn't need him to have a high completion percentage. He was barely over 50. They didn't need him to be special in this game. They did more than enough to win this football game. So Russell Wilson comes in at number three for his performance against the Arizona Cardinals in week 14 as his team won 58 to nothing. You look at the number two performer in the weekly list of the NFL starting five, and it's going to be Brandon Whedon. This is his highest finish thus far in the season. I mean, he really performed well against Kansas City. Didn't play outside of himself. Didn't force the issue. Didn't turn it over. Steady game. 17 of 30. 217 yards. No touchdowns. No interceptions. Solid game all the way around. You know, never really put his team in a compromising situation. Never put them in a bind after turning it over and making them have to defend a short field. He was solid in this game. Gave receivers a chance to catch it and run. He took off a few times himself. That was really the first time this season where I actually saw Brandon Whedon showing the wheels. They don't move very fast, but they, they get the job done. He showed us a little bit in that Ravens game earlier in the season, but he was really moving in this game. And I just thought he had a solid game. You know, really inserted himself well in the game plan and really showing us that he's maturing right before our eyes. And They played a bad Kansas City Chiefs team, and that's what you do to a bad Kansas City Chiefs team. You make them beat you. You don't beat yourself. Don't make the mistakes that help the Chiefs stay in the game. They're not a good team. You just play within yourself, within the scheme, you'll be fine. And that's what he did. And they got the win, 30-7. to Brandon Whedon is your number two member in the weekly list of the NFL starting five members. So we look at number one. And, of course, it's Robert Griffin III. His heroics, his toughness, his ability to be a leader, not only by his voice, but by his example that he set on Sunday, his ability to give his team the best opportunity to win. Even when leaving the game, he left his team in a good position. They got it done. Robert Griffin III was phenomenal in this football game. 
Didn't always get it done. But when they needed him down the stretch in crunch time, he was able to do what he could. Again, he laid his body out there on the line, got injured, came back, knew he couldn't give it anymore, knew he didn't have anything left to give, came out of the ball game, gave his team the best opportunity to win. They got it done. Robert Griffin III showed everything in his football game. The leadership, the toughness, the moxie, and the ability to get it done when it matters the most. They were in some tough spots on this drive, and Robert Griffin III went in the game, was able to help them get out of those binds and help them get in a position to win this football game before exiting and turning it over to Kirk Cousins. Again, 15 of 26, 246, one touchdown, no interceptions, and a gutsy performance by Robert Griffin III, who was playing with an injury, ultimately having to come out and allow his teammates to lift him up and get the win. 31 to 28 against the Baltimore Ravens team that hadn't lost consecutive games since 2009. They get it done, and he's your number one weekly performer in week 14 in the NFL's starting five. So you look at the overall rank now, and for the last two weeks, they've remained exactly the same. There's been no changes in the overall ranking of these quarterbacks. And again, for the third week in a row, there will be no change. Hard to move these guys around when you have the same four teams winning every week. You have the same quarterbacks getting it done week after week after week, propelling their team to victory. Hard to move these quarterbacks around. You know, even though Andrew Luck isn't playing the best of football, his team is winning. He has the best record of any member of the starting five. Hard to move him any lower than three on this list. And you shouldn't move him any lower than three. You could argue he's number two or number one, but I don't think there's really an argument there. Robert Griffin III has been one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, not just rookies, in the National Football League of any quarterback. Again, he's sporting the best passer rating. Let's get into this list in case you don't know what the list was three weeks ago, what the list was two weeks ago what the list was last week. Let's recap this list. Coming in at number five in the overall ranking of the NFL starting five is Ryan Tannehill. He's now tied for the worst record of the starting five. And again, he had a cushion on Brandon Whedon, who for the longest was stuck on two wins. He's won three straight. He's ran off three straight wins. Now he's five and eight, just like Ryan Tannehill and the Miami Dolphins. So this Dolphins team has really taken a sharp nosedive. And Ryan Tannehill hasn't been playing good football of late. Thought he played one of his better games in, in recent memory last week against San Francisco 49ers. It wasn't the most fanciest of games. It wasn't a lot of action on offense for this Dolphins team. A lot of check downs, a lot of short passes. But he did what he had to do to try to put his team in a position to win. The only reason I can't Give him the nod is because he continues to lose. That's number one. And number two, he continues to miss the deep ball. And until he starts to hit that deep ball with some consistency, I can't elevate him on this list. He's struggling in that capacity. He didn't turn it over in this game, which is a welcome sight because he had been turning it over the last couple of weeks, but he didn't do that in this game. He was solid. He took what the defense was giving him. It just wasn't enough. It was not enough against the San Francisco 49ers in this game. So he'll try his hand in week 15 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I expect him to do some serious damage against this Jacksonville Jaguars defense. And I expect him to come away with the win. If there is a 4-1 mark this week, because we'll, we'll talk about why this can't be a 5-0 week, but if this is a 4-1 week, he needs to be one of the four getting a win this week. Not the only one with a loss for the third consecutive week. So coming in at number four, in the NFL's overall list of quarterbacks in the NFL starting five, is Brandon Whedon. And Brandon Whedon has been playing better of late. I've already talked about it last couple of weeks on the program. He's coming along smoothly. I like his progression. I like his maturation right now. He's getting it done. 
He's finding ways to help his team win. And not always is he going to be sharp. Not always is he going to avoid turnovers. But he's doing a better job of hitting guys when they're open, giving them opportunities to catch the football, and be in a position to run after the catch. Again, yak is where it's at in the National Football League. Yards after the catch is what really wins you ball games in the National Football League from a receiving and quarterback standpoint. You can do all the dinking and dunking you want, but if you're going to throw a eight-yard pass, the best friend of a quarterback is the run after the catch. You know those yards after the catch are huge. Quarterbacks love it when they throw a four-yard pass, have a receiver make a couple of guys miss, and go for sixty-seven yards. There's nothing prettier than a quarterback hitting a receiver on a post or a slant route in stride and watching the receiver accelerate because he was able to catch the football in stride, on the run, on a dead sprint, and beat the defense. Split them and go to the house. And that's what good quarterbacks allow their receivers and their skill players to do. Catch it in stride, catch it in a location that they can make something happen after they corral the football. And that's what Whedon has been doing of late. And it always helps when you're not turning the football over. He didn't turn it over this week. Hasn't really been turning it over as much of late. And so his team has won three in a row. He's playing really good football right now. They're five and eight on the season after getting a 30 to seven win over Kansas City. Now we're going to see what he's able to do because this is another big test for Brandon Whedon and the Simpsons. This is another big test for Brandon Whedon and the Cleveland Browns as two members of the starting five will be pitted against each other for the first time since Russell Wilson and Ryan Tannehill met about three, four weeks ago in Miami. Tannehill was able to get the best of Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. So let's see how that matchup ends up as the Cleveland Browns will take on the Washington Redskins in week 15. Brandon Whedon versus Robert Griffin III. If he's able to play, we'll talk about Robert Griffin III a little bit later when we get to him in this list, but Brandon Whedon has been playing exceptional football, and he has this team believing that every time they step on the field, they have a shot to win the football game. Looking at the number three, member in the NFL's starting five overall ranking for the 2012 season is Andrew Luck. And as much as I would love to move Andrew Luck up this list, because he's 9-4, and four, you can't deny winning. You can talk about all the statistics you want, but the one statistic that everyone cherishes the most is W's. That number in the left-hand column, we love that number, more so than any other number you could accumulate. You can throw for 5,000 yards. You can throw for 40 touchdowns. You don't have the wins. You don't have that number in the left-hand column when we're talking about records. No one cares about all your accolades. You can ask Calvin Johnson and Matthew Stafford about that this year. You know, Matthew Stafford is going to throw for probably over 5,000 yards this season. Calvin Johnson might break Jerry Rice's all-time single-season receiving yards record. They're not going to the postseason. They only have four wins on the season. I guarantee you, you ask Calvin Johnson, Megatron, to trade in 800 of his yards for four wins, he'll do it in a heartbeat. Because winning is all that matters. And that's what Andrew Luck is doing. He's winning. And so, yeah, he's turned the ball over quite a bit. He leads the league in interceptions right now. He's turning it over way too much. Him and Drew Brees are right there, neck and neck. Fighting over who's going to turn it over more. Every week, he throws picks. Drew Brees says, no, you're not going to outdo me. I'm going to throw some interceptions now. But they're right there, neck and neck. But the difference between Drew Brees... And Andrew Luck right now, Andrew Luck's finding ways to win. They're 9-4. and four. Drew Brees is finding ways to lose. They're 5-8 and eight on the season. So, yeah, you say what you want about Andrew Luck. And yeah, I always cry about the completion percentage as well. He's not completing it at a high enough clip for me. He needs to be close to 60. Right now, he's heading toward more closer to 50. But it doesn't matter. Again, I don't care how you do it. I don't care how you get it done. I don't care what it looks like. Just get me wins. Just get me wins. You win games, you got my respect. And that's what Andrew Luck has been able to do. And that's why he's number three on this list of the NFL starting five quarterbacks for the overall ranking of the 2012 season. 
you look at the number two quarterback. And that's Russell Wilson. He's ranked second on this list in the NFL's overall ranking of this starting five group because he's been one of the most consistent quarterbacks. He's been the second most consistent quarterback on this list. I mean, every week you pretty much know what you're getting out of Russell Wilson on Sunday. You know what you're getting. You're getting a steady quarterback that's not going to make many mistakes. He's going to lead his team down the field when they need to be taken down the field to get points. He's going to be steady in his approach. He's never going to waver. He's not going to get too high. He's not going to get too low. He's going to perform when opportunities present themselves. He's going to take full advantage of it. You know what you're getting out of Russell Wilson. And that's a luxury that many teams in the National Football League, they just don't have. You can't go from week to week and know exactly what you're getting out of your quarterback. That's a rare thing in the National Football League. To know week to week, hey, I know what I'm getting out of my quarterback. If he's in the lineup, I know what I'm getting. Can't say that about many quarterbacks, but you can say that about Russell Wilson. And he's a rookie, and that's what makes him so special. He's a rookie, and you know you can count on this guy. He's one of the few people on your team, few players that you know, week in, week out, I can count on that guy to get it done. If I call his number and I need him to get it done, he'll do it. Russell Wilson has been... Phenomenal down the stretch of this season. Part of the reason, a big part of the reason, why the Seahawks right now are fifth in the NFC in the playoff chase. They're looking like a team that's going to earn a shot to play in the postseason. And right now, they're not even done. They could win their division. It could happen. Stranger things have occurred. He has a shot in the NFC West. And the only reason the Seahawks have a shot is because of Russell Wilson and his steady play at the quarterback position this year. And that's why he's number two on the NFL starting five overall ranking list for the 2012 season. So you look at number one, and before we do, we want to recap. We always recap. Let's recap this list. And it's the same as it was two weeks ago, same as it was last week. Coming in at number five, Ryan Tannehill. Still, you know, not making the big plays down the field when they're there, missing too many opportunities to help his team win football games, and consistently losing as well. The only... The only member of the starting five for the second consecutive week to lose. And so, Brian Tannehill remains at number five on this list. You look at number four. It's Brandon Whedon. Winner of three straight are the Cleveland Browns. A big reason, a big reason why is because of Brandon Whedon and his ability to help this team win football games. He's been doing his part, turning it over less, making better decisions with the ball, getting the ball in his playmaker's hands, allowing them to make plays after the catch because he's putting it in such a position for them to catch it and run. And so Brandon Whedon has been maturing right before our eyes, and he comes in at number four on this list. You look at number three in the NFL starting five overall ranking list, and it's Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is a winner. He's got the best record of any member of the starting five. He's been getting it done all season long, finding a way to help his team win, even when it wasn't pretty, even when it was gritty. He's found a way to get it done. Winning on the road and come from behind fashion. Winning at home and come from behind fashion. He's been getting it done all season long. Even though there's a lot of turnovers, even though there's times where he puts his team in a bind, he always finds a way to get them out of it. And so Andrew Luck comes in at number three. That completion percentage needs to be elevated, though. That's part of the reason why he's at number three, not number two, not number one. The turnovers and the incompletions or the completion percentage being as low as it is keeps Andrew Luck at number three in week 14 for the NFL starting five. You look at number two, Russell Wilson, Mr. Consistent. This guy's been steady all season long. You know what you're getting out of him. The Seahawks love his production. He's part of the reason why the Seahawks are 8-5 and five and still have an outside shot at winning the NFC West because of his play at the quarterback position, not turning it over. He turned it over for the first time since week 10 in this game, but it didn't matter. They won 58 to nothing. He didn't make the big mistake. He didn't make the critical mistake that cost his team. He's steady as they come as a rookie, and that's why Russell Wilson, for the third consecutive week, is number two on this list of the NFL's starting five overall rankings for the 2012 season. So for the third consecutive week, coming in at number one,
It's Robert Griffin the third. I mean, what can we say about this quarterback that hasn't already been said? He added another chapter to this storybook rookie season. Did Robert Griffin the third? Now we add toughness to it, and we already knew he was tough. You know, we've seen him take some shots and get back up, even in losing efforts. I've always heard teams say, "Hey, that's one tough guy. He he got up. You know, we were pounding him. He got up. He never complained. He never said a word. He just continued to get up." So we knew the toughness was there, but he took it to another level. He put an aura of mystique around him now by getting injured, coming back into the game, taking the team down the field, coming out of the game because he was too injured to finish the drive, but putting his team in a position to win the football game. And they were able to do so. Robert Griffin the third, best passer rating for the fourth consecutive week, passer rating up over 100, best passer rating in the National Football League now over guys like Brady and Aaron Rodgers. He's the best in passer rating in the National Football League. As another touchdown, no interceptions in this game. So, again, we're looking at 18 touchdown passes versus four interceptions. The guy is as efficient as it gets in the National Football League. And so you have to love the poise, the moxie, now the toughness, and even if, you didn't see it from before. I, I saw it already, but he showed everyone out there that the toughness exists. And then the leadership qualities. You have to love this guy, and he gets it done every single week. He's the only member of the NFL starting five to not have a stinker for a week. That one game against the Giants is the only one you could argue. He had a pretty bad game. But again, by his standards, it was a bad game. But looking at everyone else in his group, they take that game in a heartbeat and run with it. And so Robert Griffin III has really, I think, even coming into Washington, there are a lot of expectations on Robert Griffin III and what he could bring to this offense, what he could do for this team. But I think he's exceeded anything that anyone could have had in store for him coming into this season. I mean, he's a phenomenal athlete. He's a remarkable quarterback and an even better person. And so Robert Griffin III rounds up this list at number one in the NFL's starting five quarterbacks. And so that's going to do it for this episode. All of these quarterbacks have challenges in front of them. Ryan Tannehill will be taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. Brandon Whedon will be at home against Robert Griffin III. So one of these members of the starting five will have to lose. So again, for the fourth week in a row, we can't have all five members or for the fourth week in a row, we won't have all five members of the starting five win. So we'll see what happens in that game. Speaking of that game, Robert Griffin III, don't know if he's going to play yet. He's practiced, so there's an outside shot that he will. All signs point to him playing in this game. But again, we don't know what the story is there. We have to stay tuned for that, but... That's going to be a great matchup between two members of the starting five. Always good to see these guys face off head-to-head -head and see what they do against each other. You look at Russell Wilson. He'll be on the road at Buffalo trying to get their ninth win of the season for the Seattle Seahawks. Andrew Luck will be on the road against the Houston Texans. The first time those two teams meet the two best teams in the AFC South meeting for the first time this season. Look to see what Andrew Luck can do on the road against the best team in his division. It should be great in week 15. Look forward to watching all the matchups, watching these quarterbacks closely, seeing what they're doing, and seeing how they're continuing to mature and, and go through the process of being a rookie and seeing if they have what it takes to add another number in the left-hand column for their ball clubs as they've already outperformed a lot of the expectations that we've had and put on them in this season. This is the best rookie class we've ever had. You can talk about the 1983 class all you like, but I'm telling you right now, there's, there hasn't been one better than the one you're looking at right before you. And that's why this program chronicles the NFL's starting. Five. Have a good one. See you next week when we talk about what the NFL's starting five were able to do in week 15. This is your starting...